year two under Jeff Brom. Expectations continuing to rise for the Louisville Cardinals. How do they reach that level of success? Well, it's going to be required that they start out the season strong. We'll explain on today's episode of Locked on Louisville. You are Locked on Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Card Nation, what is going on, everyone? Welcome in to this Tuesday edition of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. want to take this time to personally thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, Locked On Louisville free and available on all streaming services five days a week, your team every day. Now, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. All you have to do is visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We begin the first episode in the three-episode installment breaking down the Louisville football schedule. Four-game um, episodes where we will basically analyze each four game period. We'll discuss main storylines, preview each team in the episode, and predict the results at the end. That will be the blueprint for each of the three episodes. The first episode, the main storyline, is that Louisville needs to start strong this season. It's no secret. Expectations have continued to rise. The fan base has high hopes. The team has large aspirations. The first 12-team college football playoff is upon us, and the opportunity has never been more um, reachable to get to a college football playoff. You know, the four-team playoff since 2014, it expands to 12 this season. Coming off of a 10-win 2023 campaign, the expectations are high, even though the team lost their final three games. Like, someone commented on Twitter, how can you be excited for the season when you lost the last three games? And I was like, I didn't realize that losing or having a three-game losing streak meant that you couldn't be excited. There's a ton of excitement. The um, It feels like the widespread narrative is that this team got better. Now they will have a more challenging schedule to deal with than last year. But second year under Jeff Brom, fans are justifiably excited for Louisville to get to the level of success in which we feel they can get to first things first they have to start out strong the first four game period is one that I think that if Louisville goes anything less than three and one it's a failure because if your aspirations are to win double digit regular season games to contend and get back to the ACC championship game in Charlotte, and to also be in contention for the college football playoff, you really can't afford to lose more than one game in this four-game stretch. I mentioned this on the Twitter space last night that I hosted. I've mentioned this, it feels like, over and over. I feel like a broken record. Let's look at historical Louisville schedules. Let's go back to since the Cardinals joined the ACC back in 2014, right? Let's go back to that point. Since then, there have been only two seasons before this year in which Louisville has opened up the year not facing a Power 5 or an in-conference opponent. Both of those years, 2016 and 2020, it only... Um, makes sense that you go in four-year increments. So it feels like whenever there's a presidential election, that same year, Louisville's not going to play an in-conference or a Power 5 opponent. 2014 was Auburn. I'm sorry, 2014 was Miami. 15 was Auburn. 16, they hosted Charlotte. 17, they played Purdue. 18 was Alabama. 19, Notre Dame. 2020, they hosted Western Kentucky. 2021, uh, Mississippi. 2022, uh, Syracuse, and then 2023, Georgia Tech. They played in Atlanta to start the year three times in that period. So getting the opportunity to start out this season against a mid-major opponent in Austin P. It give it's beneficial to me for two reasons. Number one, 
you get to work out some of the chemistry issues. I mean, this is a basically a brand new team. Yes, you return some key players, but you brought in a huge amount of transfers, so you get some time to um, let that group mesh with real in-game reps. And number two, sort of playing off that, there's not that insane pressure to be really good right away like there has been in years past. Like last year for Georgia Tech, the Cardinals were down at halftime by double digits. Thankfully, they went on a huge second half run, but they didn't really play the best in the first half and they had to pay for it right away. Now, I'm not saying that if they are sluggish in the opening parts of this season that they won't have some opposition, but being able to open up the season against Austin P and Jacksonville State, I think gives you the opportunity to really be able to work out uh, some of those issues, those chemistry issues, um, work off some of that rust and be able to get into good form before you get into the conference slate. Let's look at that four game um, part of the schedule. The Cardinals will open up noon kickoff on August 31st, less than two weeks away. They'll play the Austin P governors um, 12 o'clock kickoff. They will then turn around and host Jacksonville state three 30 kickoff at Cardinal stadium on Saturday, September 7th. The third game of the year, will be a host game against Georgia Tech, the first conference game of the year, Saturday, September 21st. Time is still to be determined, and then the Cardinals will travel on the road for their first road game up in South Bend at number seven, currently ranked Notre Dame, 330 kickoff on Peacock up there in South Bend on Saturday, September 28th. So pretty interesting Schedule Louisville opens up with teams uh, from from mid major conferences that they truthfully should defeat. Now Jacksonville State sort of an interesting um, opponent to deal with, but if you handle business, you should end up victorious in that game. However, one very interesting aspect is something that I failed to mention in this episode, but not something that hasn't been mentioned on this show. Louisville has a very unique buy game in that period in between the second and third game of the year so they'll play jacksonville state then they will have a bye before they play georgia tech and i think that it's really weird like i would rather louisville have um you know a bye during a different week maybe you know between notre dame and smu or between Virginia and Miami, but they do have a buy. There's two buys. You know, you have one between Clemson and Stanford, uh, both road games in early to mid November. But to have that buy in the third week of the season, I think it's unique. But it gives benefits, or it, it gives your team benefits in two different aspects. Number one, we just talked about on yesterday's show, Colin Lacey going down, extremely unfortunate. Having the bye week gives yourself a little cushion and just eliminates the possibility of that loss coming to hurt you at some point before he's able to return. Now, he's going to be out six to eight weeks is what the university is saying. And having two mid-major teams uh, or having a, another week before the season, two mid-major teams and then a bye week, it gives you basically four weeks in which you really shouldn't be able to um, be tremendously affected by that loss, but giving your team a little bit more time to continue to mesh on the field or on and off the field, I should say, you allow players that get banged up early on to rest up before they play, you know, the back half of the schedule or the last large chunk and majority of the schedule. But more importantly, you get an entire week to be able to prepare for Georgia Tech. And I think Georgia Tech is going to surprise a lot of people, but Tech will have played, I think it's four straight games. They open up the season before everyone else this weekend coming up. They'll play in Ireland against Florida State. Then they will host Georgia State. They'll go to Syracuse, the host Virginia Military Institute, and then they'll play at Louisville. The Cardinals will be their fifth game. So as much, I'm not sure how significant it is that they have, you know, five games or four games of wear and tear already on the season, but Louisville will be fresh coming off of those two games against Austin P and Jacksonville State. Now, it can't be a situation to where you let it, um, you know, make you complacent and you get a little rusty, but you get another week or basically two full weeks 
to prepare for your first ACC game and you're able to rest up in the process. So for me, I, I think that this four game stretch for Louisville before they go to Notre Dame, um, you need to start strong. You need to, in my opinion, win three out of these four games. Because if you don't, you're looking at a really tough rest of the way where you have some road games at Clemson and at Kentucky. You'll host SMU. You'll host Miami. You'll have some pretty challenging um, opponents to play. So the longer that you go, you know, sort of doing what you need to do and not losing a game you're not supposed to, the better off your opportunity is to get to that conference championship um, you know, contention and conversation. But to really talk about um, why Louisville needs to go three and one at least in these four games, we really need to sort of talk about the opposition, like what each team brings to the table. We'll give four brief previews to the respective opponents that Louisville has ahead on the first four game um, series of the schedule coming up on the next segment of Locked on Louisville. Today's episode of the show brought to you by Ibotta. Are you taking that dream vacation this fall or winter but dreading the cost? With Ibotta, you get cash back on all of your purchases so you can spend more time making memories this fall and winter and less time dreaming about them. Ibotta is a free app that lets you earn cash back every time you shop. Earn on hundreds of items from groceries to supplies, even toys, so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. It's time you join the over 50 million users who use Ibotta to earn cash back every time they shop. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code Locked On College when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play Store and download the free Ibotta app to start earning cash back and use the code Locked On College. Ibotta, that's I B O T T A in the Google Play or App Store and use the code Locked On College. Cardinal fans, thanks again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, college football back this weekend. The Locked On College Football Podcast kicks off the action with a live season preview at 7 o'clock Eastern time on Tuesday, today, August 20th, on the Locked On College 24-7 streaming YouTube channel. This four-part series covers each of the four major conferences with discussion on which ACC Big 10, Big 12, and SEC teams have a shot at the expanded college football playoffs. Be sure to check out this special streaming on Locked On College's 24-7 YouTube channel or on Amazon Fire TV. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. As we break down this first four-game slate for the Cardinals, it's the first of the three-episode series, or first of three episodes in the schedule breakdown series for the Cardinals. Sorry, that was kind of hard to uh, to um, articulate. But to get a better understanding before we get into the predictions, we got to really talk about the teams. Because let's be honest, how much have we actually gone into previewing the opposition? Like, yes, you know who Louisville like, should and shouldn't lose to per se, but what are, what is each team bringing to the table? We begin the season with Austin P, and I won't get into too much detail because this is a team that Louisville should beat by multiple, multiple touchdowns. Austin P was actually really good last year. They won nine games, um, won the, I think it's the United American or United Athletic Conference, the UAC for short, won it in 2023, but they lost their head coach, Scotty Walden, to UTEP. And unfortunately for the governor's a lot of their players ended up following Walden to the portal. It was actually like a running joke in a discord that I was in is that Austin P has lost almost their entire team. Now they hired Jeff Ferris and thankfully for them, they replenished a lot of, you know, the roster that was depleted 18 of the 26 incoming transfers for the governors come from the FBS level. So Austin P, they lost a lot of their production from last year, but they should be respectable. Still, case in point, the Cardinals should win this game, and they should win it very convincingly. We move on to Jacksonville State, who is notably coached by Rich Rodriguez, a coach that Louisville fans 
know fairly well from his days coaching um, coaching the West Virginia Mountaineers, right? However, this is a team that's it's really hard to understand how good they're going to be. They were nine and four last year. Defense is what helped them get to where they were, which is not really um, a key quality of a Rich Rodriguez team. It's usually the offense. The offense was serviceable for the Gamecocks, but they weren't really all that great. Now, the main thing for Jacksonville State that they have to focus on, and one thing that it definitely pertains to Louisville is that Jacksonville state has yet to really name a starting quarterback from what I have seen. Maybe they have up until this point, but they'll start out the season against coastal Carolina at home before they go to Louisville. Um, Zion Turner, the UConn transfer is in my opinion, likely going to get the starting nod for Jacksonville state. There's a lot of portal movement on this team. They've had to replace a lot of their skill position guys, especially on the defense. They lost some players, uh, especially on the defensive line. I think one went to the SEC, one went to like Arkansas State. Uh, the secondary has uh, some moving parts. You have Andrew Paul, a uh, highly ranked Georgia transfer at running back. Jacksonville State, once again, if Louisville handles business, they shouldn't have to worry. Jacksonville State will be better than Austin P. more than likely. Two teams that Louisville should defeat. We then move to conference play. Louisville will have a bye before playing Georgia Tech. In the first full year under Brent Key, the Yellow Jackets went 7-6. and six. They won the Gasparilla Bowl against Central Florida. Wins over North Carolina, the weird one against Miami. They lost by 8 to Georgia, played them really respectively, and they gave Louisville all they can handle in that season opener. The main thing for Georgia Tech is returning production. Haynes King returns under center. The Texas A&M transfer, second year starting, um, really challenging assignment for the Cardinals defense in week one. I think they're going to be better equipped to defend him this year. He's a guy who can really get out and run. They returned four of their starting offensive linemen, but the main thing for Georgia Tech was the rushing offense. They led the ACC with just over 200 yards a game last year on the ground. That was good for 12th nationally. Hey, uh, not Haynes King, sorry, Jamal Haynes, a thousand yard rusher, highlights that backfield. Also, Trey Cooley, former Louisville guy, is also going to receive some touches. The receiving core, better than advertised going into last season. Eric Singleton Jr., Malik Rutherford, and Christian Leary, all three return in Atlanta to play for the Ramblin' Rex. So the offense has some returning production. I think it will be um, sort of the go-to strength for this team. However, defense a lot of veterans that are returning but still looking to take the next step and getting to that next level of play. The Tech defense really wasn't all that great. It was suboptimal to the point to where they replaced a lot of the defensive coaching staff. So we'll see what Georgia Tech looks like on that side of the field. And then finally, Notre Dame. They went 10-3 and in 2023. One of those losses, obviously, to the Louisville Cardinals um, replaced Sam Hartman unfortunately for Louisville fans, but they replaced him with Riley Leonard, who Louisville um, actually held his team to zero points last year. Duke, it was sort of a, a nasty weather, overcast, rain. Leonard was dealing with that ankle injury. It definitely uh, hindered his progress, but fully healthy Leonard with Mike Denbrock at offensive coordinator from LSU. Now, I'm not sure that all of that praise for what we saw last year at LSU can be mainly contributed to Denbrock as much as it is Joe Sloan, the now offensive coordinator, co-offensive coordinator, alongside uh, Cortez Hankton, and then Jaden Daniels, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas. All three went first round. You have some great offensive linemen and Will Campbell and Emory Jones. But this isn't an LSU preview. It's just more so to say that Denbrock – Good offensive coordinator hire. I'm just not sure that they're going to replicate what LSU did this past season. Audric Estime to the league. Jeremiah Love and Jadarian Price are going to fill the void at running back. Uh, Mitchell Evans is one of the better tight ends in the country coming back. And they brought in some key players like Bo Collins and um, I think it's Mitchell to the wide receiving core and some guys being brought back there. So the skill position and quarterback are going to look really good. They had to replace three starting offensive lineman, including first-round pick Joe Alt. The starting left tackle, or uh, predicted starting left tackle, I think it's Charles uh, Jaguza, J-A-G-U-S-A-H. Um, 
underwent uh, an injury that will hold him out for the entirety of the season. So offensive line is something to focus on for this team. Defense is going to be really good. Um, Al Golden's defense was top 10 last year in almost every category. Xavier Watts in the back end of that secondary. Howard Cross in the middle of that defensive line returning All-Americans. They've got some guys via the portal like um, uh, R.J. Oban from Duke. Really, really good player. Some really, really good defense. I think it's going to be another top 10 defense. So I know it was a quick preview and a limited amount of time, but it is, I think, worth noting some of these things that we've just brought up because it really directly leads into the predictions aspect of this series. We'll predict what I believe is going to happen through the first four games for the Louisville Cardinals coming up on the next segment. Today's episode of the show brought to you by FanDuel. You heard us talk a lot about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have something a little different for you. I've already taken advantage of it. I don't know why you wouldn't. Because now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers, both current and new, can bet $5 and get a three-week three week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. That is, with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market game. All you'll need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to download America's number one sports book. And into the final segment of this Tuesday edition of the Locked on Global Podcast. Once again, I want to thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to drop a like on this video, leave a question, drop a comment, subscribe if you're feeling generous. The question of the day for me will be the main question throughout this three-part series. What will the Cardinals' record be after playing Austin P, Jacksonville State, Georgia Tech, and Notre Dame? Well, Unlike the other two episodes that are going to follow this episode, um, some of this conversation is going to go very quickly. I think Louisville handles business against Austin P. Even if they struggle a little bit against Jacksonville State, I think that the Cardinals will come out victorious and start the season out 2-0 before that early uh, in-season week three bye. Now, Georgia Tech has long been one of my top trap games, so to speak. It was number two after SMU. And, um, you know, I think that ultimately Tech is going to be better than what people think, in my opinion. I am higher on GT than it feels like most of the country is because I believe in the offense. I think Brent Key is doing a great job down in Atlanta. Um, for the rambling wreck. Now defense, they have to figure it out. They returned some of their main linebackers. Jackson Hamilton actually transferred from Louisville to Georgia Tech, but they need to get better. They need to take the the next step. The pass rush has to be better. Unfortunately, they lost some players up in the trenches. The secondary is in a weird spot. There's a lot of questions surrounding that defense. Brent Key is a defensive coach, so we'll see uh, if that's able to be taken care of. Offensively, I think that they're going to be really solid. I mean, we saw them put up points against North Carolina. They held their own against Georgia. Um, I think Haynes King with another year under his belt is going to be fairly solid. Jamal Haynes at running back, one of the better running backs in the conference. And then Eric Singleton Jr., Malik Rutherford, Christian Leary. For me, I think that is a top five receiving trio in the conference. Louisville is also in that top five. Miami's in that top five. Um, you might be able to go with Clemson, NC State, also being right there, NC State's in the top five. Nonetheless, I, I think that Georgia Tech belongs in that conversation as well. I think Louisville wins this game for the record. This is one of those games, I called it a trap game, that if Louisville doesn't handle business and they come out sluggish and they aren't as sharp as they need to be, I could see them losing this game. And if they lose this game, you're decreasing the margin for error significantly because you're then it's making it to the point to where Notre Dame almost becomes like a must win game. Because if you lose both of those games, you're sitting at two and two with eight games left and you're looking down the schedule with road games at Clemson and Kentucky and you're hosting SMU in Miami. There's little margin for error. 
And I think losing that Georgia Tech game, creating that loss in the ACC, you're not giving yourself, you're not doing yourself a lot of favors as it relates to the scheduling because you're going to have to limit the amount of ACC losses this year. Now, this is where people will be a little bit, um, I think, perturbed with what I say. I went back and forth in this, and truthfully, up until about last night, I've always said between the two, I think they're both toss-ups, and I think Louisville loses to Miami, and they win against Notre Dame. I'm flipping that prediction. I think that Louisville defeats Miami, and they lose close at Notre Dame. It's the first row game of the season. It just so happens to be prime time against Notre Dame. Notre Dame is going to have a very good squad. Marcus Freeman has done a great job of adding talent to that team. The defense is going to be really, really good. I think the offense is going to be better than it was last season for Notre Dame. Now, this is 100% a winnable game for the Cardinals. And if you told me that you think that the Cardinals will win this game, I'm going to say, you know what? I'm okay with that. But when I look at the schedule and my official record prediction, I'll be honest with you, it's 10 and 2. Spoiler alert, alert, spoiler alert, it's 10 and 2. But what people sort of lose sight of is that to go 10 and 2, You have to win 10 games and you have to lose two. So there have to be two losses somewhere. So initially that loss was going to be against Miami. And I thought to myself, well, Cristobal really hasn't done a great job with the talent that that he's had. Their secondary has some question marks. That's a home game for Louisville. I think that the Cardinals are going to beat Miami. So I flip that loss to Notre Dame. It's going to be arguably the toughest challenge that Louisville will face, the toughest team that they will play. Um, I think it's a close loss. I don't think it's one that Wobble gets blown out or anything. Um, It's just a matter of, you know, probably no Colin Lacey. You're you're hoping that everyone stays healthy. I could see Wobble winning this game. But for the sake of the predictions, when you look at the losses, I think one comes closer to the end of the season. But you look at that first four-game slate, I think eh, it's right there, right? I think it's Notre Dame or Miami is where that first initial loss comes to. Unfortunately, the team won't start out 6-0 according to this record prediction, according to this three-episode series breakdown. So 3-1 is where I have Louisville going in the first four games. That is probably the expectation. It doesn't change the outlook of the team because one loss at likely a top-10 team in Notre Dame or close to being a top-10 team it's going to be right there. Now you look at Notre Dame opening up the season at Texas A&M, so they might not be top 10 when they play. But if they win that game, they'll probably beat Northern Illinois, Purdue, and Miami of Ohio. So if Louisville starts out 3-1 and one with the loss coming to Notre Dame, you remain undefeated in conference play, so there is still you're in a great position to get to the ACC championship game. A loss against Notre Dame on the road is not going to kill your playoff resume. It would boost it with a win. That would be a huge win, a huge resume booster, but it's not going to automatically take you out of the playoffs. But again, it's going to make it more of a priority to win the games coming up. I think that Louisville achieves more success in the second of the three, uh, four game slate. And we'll talk about that on tomorrow's episode of the show when we break down the four parts of the season with SMU, Virginia, Miami, and Boston College. But that is going to wrap up the first part of this three-part series, breaking down the Louisville football um, season overall. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.